Parshat Kit Vayetze primarily details Yaakov's sojourn and time in Haran with Lavan. It, of course, begins in Per Kaf Zayin, Per Kaf Chet, with the Pasuk Vayetze Yaakov in Be'er Sheva, Ve'elech Harana, and Yaakov was there for, for quite a while. After a series of delays, Yaakov was, in fact, there for 20 years. As we know from later on in his final confrontation with Lavan, Yaakov says in Perak Lamed Aleph, Pasuk Mem Aleph, Zeli Yisrim Shana Bveitecha Avadaticha Arba Asri Shana B'Shnei B'Notecha V'Shei Shanim B'Tzonecha V'Tachlef Et Muskarti Aseret Munim. Yaakov spends 20 years in the house of Lavan, working as an Eved, hard work for his wives, for his salary, and Lavan gives him quite a hard time. Interestingly enough, the fact that Yaakov spends more than 20 years in Haran is, of course, not surprising to us because we're familiar with the story of Parshat Ve'etze. But perhaps it should be somewhat surprising to us because in the context of the continuation uh, of the story here in Parshat Toldot and Ve'etze, it perhaps should seem surprising. Why do I say this? Well, if we turn back for the moment to the end of Parshat Toldot and we think about why it is that Yaakov leaves for Haran and the expectation uh, developed uh, at the very end of Parshat Toldot, it might turn out that 20 years seems quite a bit of a long time to spend in Haran. Previously, towards the end of Parshat Toldot, uh, after Rivka overhears Esav plotting uh, to kill Yaakov, uh, she tells uh, Yaakov that, she should, that he should run away uh, to, to Haran. And what she says is as follows, Run to my brother in Haran, and you'll stay there for a short period of time until your brother's anger subsides. So she expects it to be a short period of time. And we also might expect it to be a, a short period of time. But of course there's another aspect to Yaakov's journey to Haran. It's not just uh, to escape the, the burning anger of Esav. It's also to find the wife. There's a command not just from his mother, but also from his father. And a few psukim later, Yitzchak uh, commands Yaakov and tells him in Perak Kavchet Pasuk Bet, Kum lech padana aram beta betuel avi imecha, v'kach lecha misham isha bevnot lavan achi imecha. Go back to padana aram, to the house of betuel and lavan, and find yourself a wife. And the truth is, how long should this take? Well, indeed, we actually know how long it should take to find a wife in Haran, uh, from the house of betuel and lavan, from the family circle because this has happened beforehand. Previously, in Parshat Toldot, Avraham had commanded Eved Avraham, uh, Eliezer, to sojourn towards Haran to find the wife for his son Yitzchak. And on some plane, the story of the finding of the wife in Parshat Toldot and the finding of the wife or the wives in Parshat Vayetze bear an eerie resemblance to each other. In both stories is a journey to the same place, to Padan Aram, to the house of Betuel and Levan. In both stories, whether respectively Rivka or Rachel, the prospective wife is met at a Be'er Mayim. In both stories, Lavan appears on the scene with an orphan of hospitality. And of course, in both stories, there's a fourth element eventually parting from Lavan and a bracha from Lavan. But interestingly enough, how long does this process take? Well, in Parshat Toldot, we're told that the Ebed Avram gets up the next morning and asks to leave. It in fact takes about one day, or perhaps a little bit longer, including travel time. But for some reason or another, it takes Yaakov over 20 years to find his wife and turn, turn back to Canaan. And the question is, why does Yaakov's sojourn take 20 years? What exactly takes so long? After all, Rivka expects it to be short, and finding a wife should really only take about one day or so. In responding to this question, uh, in fact, there are many, many different answers to this question. And often, our attention is often drawn to perhaps the character of Esav, the implacable anger of Esav, the fact that the threat of Esav still looms for Yaakov, and therefore he can't return until after 20 years. Perhaps another character we're drawn to in trying to explain this problem is that of Lavan. The tricky of Lavan, the perfidy of Lavan, the difficulty of dealing with Lavan. Simply put, it takes Yaakov 20 years to assemble his uh, marriages, uh, to assemble his family, and it's really all because of the tricky of Lavan. Well, indeed, uh, both of these points might be correct. I would like to focus on a third aspect, not the character of Esav or the character of Lavan as an explanation, 
of the time that Yaakov spends uh, in the house of Lavan, but perhaps something about the character of Yaakov on some plane. And to briefly unpack this, I would like to point to that key moment, that key time, that first wedding night scene found in Parshat Vayetze in Parak Kaftet. After the Torah tells us that uh, Yaakov and Lavan are, are brothers, uh, and because of the fact uh, that they're brothers, Lavan says to Yaakov in Perak Kavtet Pasuk Tetvav, Vayomer Lavan Yaakov, Achi Achiata, Vavarti Chinam, you can't work for me, you can't be my Eved for free. So it's agreed that there's going to be some sort of salary. And now what's quite interesting here is that there's an interesting connection to Prashat Todot, because after all, if they're brothers, then Lavan is the older brother, and Yaakov is the younger brother. And here we have the younger brother, the Tsair, working for the older brother, who might be known as the Rav. Of course, one of Yaakov's great expectations in life is Rav Yaakov, ya, Rav Yavod Seir, that the older brother will serve or work for the younger. But here, suddenly he, the younger brother, works for the older. A bit later on, as we progress in the Pesukim, uh, we of course come to the key moment of the wedding night. And what does Lavan do? Well, Lavan decides to do a little bit of a trick, a little bit of a switch. Uh, and we find out in Pasuk Kafei, Vahi Baboker Vinehi Leah, here another fascinating two connections to Parshat Toldot, where in Parshat Toldot, Yaakov had switched siblings upon his father Yitzchak in the dark, when Yitzchak, in Yitzchak's blindness. Here Lavan switches siblings upon Yaakov in the dark in the wedding night, where Yaakov had switched the younger for the older, here, Lavan switches the older for the younger. And finally, of course, what does Yaakov proclaim? Lama Rimitani, why did you trick me? Uh, but this, of course, is a kind of ironic echo of Yitzchak's statement to Esav after the trick where Yaakov took the brachot from Esav. Ba'achicha bir mirma, the same word, mirma Rimitani, v'lakachet bir koteha. On some level, we might say that Yaakov suffers at the hands of Lavan in a kind of mida keneged mida fashion as a kind of onesh. Uh, for some of his actions in the prior parsha, And on some plane, we should think of all of Parshat Vayetze as a period of time when Yaakov goes into Galut and he's Maratzel and Sho. He serves out his punishment for what he has done. And it takes 20 years for this process to happen. So it's not just um, the character of Esav or the character of Lavan, but also the character of Yaakov that's at stake here in the extended Galut uh, of Yaakov in the house of Esav. One last point, and just to close the circle, certainly in this period of time, Yaakov uh, learns a, a lesson. Uh, in the end of the day, uh, after Yaakov complains to Levan about the 20 years of hard work and the switching of the salary, he says in Perak Lamed Aleph, Pasuk Membet, Ulei Elokei Avi Elokei Avram Upachi Ditzak Hayali Kiatare Kam Shelachtani. It is all due to God, and everything I have is because of God. And Yaakov recognizes Hashkacha. And Yaakov is able to return, and this is the way that Yaakov becomes an Av, a progenitor for all of Am Yisrael. While perhaps he errs, or perhaps uh, things go wrong for him, and he doesn't get, go to Galut, but on some level, Yaakov uh, serves out his time, learns his lesson, and is eventually able to return to Eretz Yisrael.